Uh, first and foremost, you know, there's been this big review that we're talking about tonight. Uh, one of the aspects of this is whether or not uh, essentially being a care leaver should be a protected characteristic in law. Where do you stand on that? Well, it was actually our group that campaigned hard for this uh, with the care review. Uh, so it's something that we are really passionate about. Um, it's not going to be a silver bullet as such, but it's really going to help in the background. And what, what I'm particularly interested in with the protected characteristic is the indirect discrimination that happens. Um, where, so, so I think it, it's going to give, it's going to give policy makers and decision makers uh, something to think about when, when they're creating those, those uh, policies. Mean in practical terms. So, when you say you want it to be a character, a protected characteristic, give us an example of what that would look like. How, how would it benefit people? Well, you've got like let, let's say um, there's there's care leavers out there who were split up whilst they was in care. That happens quite a lot. They'll get split up. They'll have their care records uh, written about them, and then years later they'll try and find their uh, siblings, they'll ask for copies of their care re records uh, under data protection guidance, but then their family's names will be redacted because of data protection. Now, if the when the Information Commissioner creates those rules and regulations and guidance, they at the moment have to um, do an equality impact assessment on the nine current uh, protected characteristics, which will see how the policy impacts them. Now, if care experience was in that those those ten, then they would see that these care experience people are a little bit different. They need to have their siblings' names so that they can go and find them. You know, and I know people who it's taken fifty years to get back in touch with their with their siblings. Yeah, see when you say it like that, That's it does sound. Uh, sorry, go ahead. That, that's just one example. And, and then there's another one, for instance, um, like recently Shelter have really uh, campaigned hard in the private rental sector. And they've managed to um, demonstrate that land, uh, landlords and letting agents that say no DSS or no housing benefit are actually discriminating against women. Uh, now, women is uh, sex is a, is a protected characteristic, and and what's actually what they've said there is that it's indirect discrimination because women are more likely to be on benefits, so therefore it's it's against the rules. Now, if you if you adopt the same approach with care experience people and you know letting agents right now with with the way the the housing sector is, they they will hardly take uh, anybody unless they've got a, a parental guarantor or a guarantor. Now, what what, what will care leavers do if they've got no guarantor you know for, for private rented property and then if you, you look at universities who who have like term time term time um halls of residence and what what do care experience people do when when everyone goes on home on holiday to the parents that you know what do they do during a bed and breakfast so these are all indirect discriminations that can really help people like us campaigning in the background to, to make policy change